This here is the Antec DP505. And let's go ahead and get something obvious out of the way. Uh, yeah, give me a second here. Yeah, my voice sounds like crap. And it's because I've been sick for the past two weeks. I'm really trying here, so just, just bear with me, please. This is a lovely mid tower, all white. You can get it in all black if you'd like. You can see great airflow up front. You can see straight through the, to these three included 120 millimeter white fans. Uh, you've also got plenty of room inside for activities. You can fit up to EATX motherboards in here, and that's just left to right if you have a, a longer than usual uh, ATX style motherboard that might not fit here. But uh, you can see, I mean, you could put a custom loop in here. Wait, wait a minute. You can put a custom loop in here. So that is exactly what we're going to do here. I am probably going to regret this. These are usually pretty frustrating to put together, but I've already pre-assembled some things you can see. So uh, hopefully it works out. Antec is the product sponsor of this video. So as we'll be building in the DP505, uh, we'll be talking about some of the features, some hardware support, things you might expect, uh, ways to manage cables, all that good jazz. I think it's the most organic way to in integrate a, a case and a style video uh, with a pretty unique PC build, which I'm sure a lot of you are interested in seeing. And uh, yeah, custom loops can go one of two ways. So they'd be very simple, easy to throw together because everything just works perfectly or the more likely outcome, it, it's all devastating and we have to completely rework stuff from the ground up. But at least you'll be here to watch all of that mayhem potentially unfold. Are you ready? Stay with me. Introducing Kyoxia's new XG8 series NVMe SSDs featuring 5th generation Bix Flash 3D TLC memory and PCIe 4.0 compatibility. With capacities up to 4 terabytes and support for optional security features like TCG Pyrite and Opal, Kyoxia drives are perfect for your next desktop, server, or workstation. Sequential reads and writes reach up to 7,000 and 5,800 megabytes per second respectively and are suited for ultra-fast program, OS, and VM load times, bundled with peace of mind warranties and and at affordable price points. Kyoxia's comprehensive PCIe 4 SSD portfolio continues to grow with products offered for a wide range of applications. Check them out, including their new XG8 drives by clicking the link below. Now, if you're new to modern Antec cases, they do have the DP503, which is already recently built in. This is the white DP505, uh, which is kind of a, a more upscale version of the 503, but you'll find they're very similar, which is why I don't wanna just run through all the basic specs like we did in that one. Um, you'll find pretty, common themes throughout. This has a GP bracket holder. I need to remove that because we're not gonna have room for it with our reservoir pump combo and other things in here. We're gonna go for a white, black, and mild pink color scheme. Yeah. I, I don't know how this is gonna look. Um, I, I have a, a rough idea, but screw it, let's, let's do it. This will give you an idea of what we're looking for. So these are cable extensions we're gonna use in this build. And it's all mostly white, a bit of black. We're gonna have black radiators. Uh, we'll also have uh, black brackets. And then a slice of pink, thin slice. I think only in the cables. Pink will be nowhere else in the build. We'll go ahead and get started with the platform assembly. We're gonna go with Intel's latest 13th gen, 13900K. This thing is an absolute slayer of all. We're gonna go ahead and pop up this lever here. And uh, oh my, what a beautiful socket. And I just realized you can't even see that from your camera angle. Ooh la la, there we go. Nice and easy here. Is it? There we go, that's better. Lower this down. It's always a little awkward. There we go, move that out of the way. Lower this down and there you go, CPU install. Next up is RAM, some beautiful T-Force Extreme ARGB modules in white, of course, to match the rest of the aesthetic. Let's drop these in one by, I just realized that's not even aligned. You know what? Doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. Every now and then you get tripped up on RAM. Here we go, second dim. Oh yeah, love the way this color scheme is vibing. Last things here for now are the water block for the CPU and storage drive. Let's uh, gonna slide these out for 1700 and 1800. There we go. I think, I think we're good. Now we'll tighten down our CPU water block. And at this point, with our storage drive also in here, we can get the platform in the DP505. And in she goes. Look at that. What a beautiful combination 
I love white motherboards inside white cases. There's just something so special looking about them. Obviously I need to tighten this down, but uh, yeah, you get an idea what this is all gonna look like. You can see there is plenty of room here for an EATX motherboard if you wanted to go that route. It would probably cover up these white rubber grommets here, but not to worry, I have a couple more up front, which you can use for routing fan cables, reservoir, uh, pump cables, things like that. You've got plenty of room above the motherboard for a fan radiator combo, standard uh, th uh, thickness for the rad, which is really cool. Uh, you get a 120 mil mount at the rear. Then ventilation above the basement, a cutout for dedicated PCI supplemental power, rubber grommets at the base. I mean, it's all really well thought out. I love the fact that the grommets are also white to fit the white theme. Next, I wanna take care of our radiator reservoir assembly. I've got the front fans removed and this should just slide. Well, should, yeah, there we go. Okay, slide in. Uh, I've got the uh, basic wiring, front I own, all that taken care of. So this will sit kind of like here. Yep, and my goal is to have this soft tubing because we're going soft tubing, it's just easier. Um, I'm gonna have the soft tubing hidden as much as possible. So similar to how we've done it in a previous custom loop build video, we're gonna have two 90 degree fittings over the CPU block pointing upward and then that soft tubing will just simply wrap around and behind the motherboard tray. So uh, that's really all you'll see. We won't be custom cooling the graphics card. I do have a white GPU though. It's gonna look really good in this build. There we go, all buttoned up and we're just again reusing the stock case fans. These have integrated ARGB capabilities so I don't wanna ditch these. Uh, we've got the front panel here which is nicely um, indented so you can fit fans in front of the chassis which is nice, saves room for thicker radiators on the other side. Just clip this back in. There we go. So now I think you can get a decent kind of approximation of where things are gonna go. There is still so much space here for a decent length graphics card. Obviously nothing super chonky. Uh, you'd need like a full size, I don't know, like a full tower for that. But um, the DP505 still gives you plenty of room for, uh, for this kind of creativity. And what we're gonna be doing is again, running all these tubes behind the motherboard tray. <clears throat> I think it's possible. We might be pinching the tubes just a bit, running them through some of these cutouts, but I'm gonna try my best to make it work. I'm also, now that I'm looking at it, I'm a bit concerned about how we're gonna get the bottom tube to run. We're gonna need a 90 degree on this. So a 90 degree back here, and then we'll need a 90, actually a couple 90s for the CPU to run up and into this cutout up top. And I think there's a decent enough space again to, to minimize pinching. And then we're gonna turn our graphics card vertically and it's gonna have a white shroud. So you'll just see white everywhere and white fans. I think it's gonna look really good. Uh, what I wanna do first is go ahead and take care of the fittings and we'll try running this tubing. This is, you know, just, it's a uh, flex tubing. So it'll be pretty, easy to troubleshoot and mess around with things. Look at these first two on the block. Again, pointing upward, so something like this. And then of course for each one, we'll need our compression fitting. Make sure that uh, everything is tightened down properly. We've got our O-rings in there. So uh, looking pretty good. We'll just repeat the process over on this side. Oh yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, maybe white fittings would have been nice here. I do. I did have some but uh, they weren't uh, the compression style for soft tubing. I think the black contrast, it works okay. Now, there's a bit of a trick with soft tubing that I'll talk to you about here. So objectively, I think that hardline rigs just look better. I mean, you get the perfect 90s and things left and right, you get the really nice tight bends and turns. Soft tubing, you just kind of have to go with the flow. You get a lot of weird curves and things. So nothing really looks symmetrical or super clean, but you can get around that by reducing the, uh, the distance and trying to align things with 90 fittings and 45 fittings as best you can. So if you look at that tube there, you might think at first glance, it's a hard line tube. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a rigid tube, but it's not. It's actually flex tubing. And the way I was able to do this was, um, yeah, to just get the two endpoints, one on top of the other, almost perfect. And then you just uh, keep a really tight tube and uh, get it to, to where it fits just perfectly over each fitting, and there you go, you get something like that. So, pretty sweet. Now these next two runs will require uh, quite a bit more tubing, tubing length, so I'm going to keep it all as one reel, so I don't want to short myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and push this onto the barb on one side, make sure it's all the way down, compression fitting nice and tight, and uh, yeah, so I think there's actually enough slack here 
that uh, we can safely angle this down behind the motherboard tray without the uh, tubing pinching at all. So that's really nice. We'll get the other one doing the exact same thing and we'll run both of these into the radiator and uh, the pump. Want to mind the direction of fluid flow in the block though. I have to get that right. We'll get this one tightened down and this one is uh, to feed the reservoir from below. This is running from the CPU block. And then we've got our second CPU entry. So everything gets tucked away up top and just kind of disappears. I like that these are parallel more or less at the start and then they kind of merge together and then they disappear behind the motherboard tray. And also took about 20 minutes here to run a quick pressure test. You can see that uh, we are still well within the green, which is where I had it. Haven't really seen the needle drop at all. And this is basically just pumping a bunch of air into the closed loop to make sure there aren't any leaks. Uh, so this is just a peace of mind and I'm happy to proceed. So this is what she looks like so far. And uh, yeah, again, I think it looks pretty clean. The only thing I'm not really too excited about is this bin here which uh, definitely reveals that it's a soft tube build this one here you might be able to get away with it looking just like a really wide hard line bend but uh, i think this one just it gives it away the other two though i mean if you look at it from the side like that one's pretty straight up and down and so is that one in the back so i'm pretty proud of the way those turned out um, we could have drilled into the case and made like official uh, g quarter fitting you know uh, slots for these tubes but uh you know for a quick and uh or I was gonna say quick and dirty, but it's actually a pretty quick and clean solution. Uh, I don't think this is too bad at all. And I spent nowhere near as much time as I would have if I was hard line bending. So with that, let's go ahead and get the power supply in here and the graphics card. We'll cable manage a bit and then we'll fill this loop up and try to turn the system on. Oh my, and these custom cables are just the icing on the cake. I gotta say, I really like the way that uh, the slight pink in these pops it's just a, it's a nice change of pace because everything else is pretty monochromatic. So this looks really good. Might finagle with that a bit more later, but for now, yes, I love it. Another really cool thing about the DP505 is that if you want to vertically mount your card, as we're doing here, you don't have annoying PCI bracket uh, little frame pieces. I don't really know what they're called. Just little pieces of the frame, you know, that stretch across. So when you remove all these slots, you still have bits to work around here. When you remove two side-by-side -side covers, you can see it is wide open, which means you can pretty much use any vertical mount kit without issue when it comes to connecting your HDMI and DisplayPort cables. Oh, that didn't, that didn't go in the way I thought it would. That's a little, little tough. There we go. Something like that. Okay. And getting the rest of the bracket in here. Oh yeah, looking nice and clean. And here we go. I know you're wondering what card we were gonna use. This is the Zotac Gaming Amp White Edition RTX 3060. Isn't she a freaking beauty? We're working with a neutral white here, so nothing crazy, no eggshell colors, yellowish, bluish, any of that. Uh, Zotac did a really good job with the neutral white paint and uh, the fans, all that match. The card looks in, in, to be in really good shape. Actually, I bought this used on eBay for a really good price. I think uh, around like 200 bucks or something like that. It does use two eight pins, which um, that's okay and uh, we're gonna bridge our 8-pin uh, pink cables anyway. So I'm ready to get this in the rig. Let's see what it looks like. We can just gently lower it in since we've already got our bracket installed. Oh, look at that. What a perfect fit. We have you know, just enough space between the reservoir pump combo and the card to be comfortable. Again, just thanks to how compact this card is. It's a bit dirty. I probably should have cleaned it a tad before uh, throwing it in here. But other than that, I mean, this is just, that, that, wow, all of these components feel like they've been made for each other. Awfully tight bend here on these uh, supplemental cables running right in front of our RAM, but it'll do and it looks pretty darn good. <coughs> oh, oh. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm still pretty sick. I'm really trying to work through this. I'm sorry if it's annoying you guys. I'm, I'm trying my best to suppress this. I really need to get back into making videos again. We're getting behind schedule, so this one has to go up soon. Um, but uh, I wanted to take a minute before we add the fluid, which will happen actually tomorrow in, in my time because I, I, need, a, I need to relax. I'm, I'm losing it energy-wise. Um, but uh, I wanted to just, yeah, show you a few shots of what the rig looks like pre-fluid because I think this is a really clean space for the system. Uh, the graphics card, I think, is the icing on the cake. The cables with the just pinch of pink is really nice. I might actually call this build pinch of pink. I think that's, that's, <laughs> I actually really like that because 
I mean, you look at it, it's like, oh, he built a white, a white rig, but you call it pinch of pink and it, it just, it draws your eyes inward to the cables. And, uh, you know, you follow the cables to all the, the pertinent components in the rig. It just, it really works. The only thing, again, I'm really not a fan of is this one tube bend. It's not even a bend. It's just, it kind of naturally bends in. But um, other than that, for a soft tube custom loop, this is a pretty swell looking one. I'm excited to see what it looks like with fluid in there. And uh, well, that's gonna take place tomorrow. But for you, it'll only take place in a matter of seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hey, there we are, day two. Uh, my voice still sounds pretty awful, sorry about that. Let's get this filled up with some fluid. For that, we'll be using AK Cryofuel. This is Mystic Fog, which again, it's like a slightly opaque coolant. I actually haven't seen this uh, in person before, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Uh, we'll also be using a small fill bottle, and that's pretty much it. Now, I imagine it will take a good while to prime this loop because the reservoir is uh, first off, kind of in the middle of the system, and it's also not at the highest point. No matter how we turn the rig, um, it's always going to be somewhere in the middle. So it uh, will mean that it's, it's yeah, going to be difficult to fully top off. We'll try to get as much of the air out of the system as we can throughout this process. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Took, took a good little minute there. Yeah, it went down pretty fast, that's okay. Again, we've gotta continue filling this until all the air is out. More bubbles. You know, especially in this radiator, we really wanna make sure all the air is out of that. And uh, the best way to do that is to have the radiator at the bottom so that all the air trapped in there can migrate upwards. Oh, they think we have most of it out. Let's go ahead and give it an official go then. I'm, uh, I'm not too nervous again. I, no leaks, so at this point, it's just gonna come down to whether or not we wired things correctly. The, all the, uh, the RGB up front, I, I didn't really bother with the RGB in the, uh, in the blocks and things. I think we'll be okay. Just notice one of these fans is like clicking really loud. Of course, I bet I used 3060 and it's got a clicky fan. Maybe we can like lube it up or something. Other than that, yeah, I can feel the fluid churning. Fans up front are working. LED in the card up top, LEDs in the DRAM. This is looking really sweet. Of course, the zero stop function in the graphics card, which means that uh, if it's not under heavy stress, it just won't bother spinning them at all. And that's preferred at this point because, golly, this fan is really freaking loud. I'm not sure what is wrong with it. Definitely needs to be cleaned though, that's for sure. This looks really nice. I love how subtle the LEDs are here. Uh, actually, everything's just white. Are the fans up front white? Yeah, fans up front are white as well. You can change the colors of those fans. Not sure if you can see them on camera. That's just the, yeah, the rainbow effect. But uh, I'm really digging it. It's a nice, simple looking build. Um, it definitely wasn't simple to build, but uh, it, it, it doesn't really look, I don't know. It, it doesn't look super, super cluttered. I think everything looks like it belongs here. And I'm really happy with the parts that we chose. You can see the fans through the front, how nice they look. I think the, the white LEDs are just, that's the best way to go. Or at least uh, I think what they do to simulate white here is just the RGB all shining at max brightness, but it looks really good. It looks neutral and it actually matches the other uh, white-ish variants of the uh, LEDs in the build. You can see the white Zotac label on the graphics card and the uh, two white dims uh, from Team Group. Uh, the pump needs to be recalibrated just a bit because it is a tad weak. I think I ran it into one of the chassis uh, fan headers, so that'll be pretty easy to do once we hop into the BIOS. And uh, yeah, again, I'm not seeing any leaks or anything. That's really good. The pink, the pink is just, I'm really glad I added that. Again, I know I've, I've said that before, but uh, I really like the way that uh, just a bit of subtle coloring here can really top off a build. I love the way that CPU block looks. Uh, all of this gear for the most part is from uh, Corsair's Hydro uh, HydroX lineup. There is an EK 
uh, 360 radiator in here, just a bit thicker. Or, you, you know, you can fit a thicker radiator in here uh, in the DP505 because the fans are again placed in front of um, the, the main chassis. So you could actually fit something closer to 35, maybe 45 mil thick uh, up front here, which is really nice. Again, just mind where you place your reservoir and how long your card is. This seemed to work out perfectly. Around back here, you can see unhindered port access for our graphics cards because we don't have those weird slots that run across uh, with the frame, uh, power supply access at the bottom, and uh, yeah, just your 120 mm mount up top with your motherboard rear I.O. I also didn't talk about front I.O. Uh, you can see we've got two USB uh, type A ports. Uh, we have a headphone jack, a microphone jack, the LED button, this is what you can click to cycle the LEDs for the fans. All that's integrated, by the way. You get it in like an integrated fan hub in here, which is really nice. Uh, power buttons here. You're gonna get your LED uh, lights for uh, hard disk usage and just power. And then you have a type C port as well. Cute little type C port here at the top. All in all, I think you'll be very impressed with the Antec DP505. It, it's just a no BS mid tower. Honestly, it's the perfect size, I think. Uh, could it be a bit smaller? Yes, but then we couldn't have done what we wanted to do here. Uh, and there are other cases out there for that, including from Antec. But uh, this one is perfect for pretty much anything. It's not overly large. It's not super heavy or anything. Uh, I do want to show you very quickly, and I just remembered it, what the side panel looks like uh, installed because it's actually very clear, which I love. And it does have, yeah, pardon the, the mess. It's, it's pretty messy. It does have white framing as well to blend in with the remainder of the chassis. And I think the way this works, it just kind of slots in from below and then clips in up top. Did I do, no, oh, okay. It slots in at the bottom, but toward the rear tad, and then you just gotta push it like half an inch forward, and then it'll clip into place, and we'll tighten it at the rear. Uh, by the way, we haven't done the peel yet. Here it comes. Oh. Anyway, sorry about that. As you can see, again, it is fully transparent. There's no tint. I, I freaking love the way that this looks. Um, I love the white border around the tempered glass and the fact that you can see everything very cleanly straight through. It's the icing on the cake, I think. Not a bad two days worth of work, eh? So with that, again, I wanna thank Antec for being the product sponsor of this video. Uh, they've come a long way, I think, with, the, with their case designs. They are so much more modern. These cases are super, super build friendly. If, I mean, if you have even like an EATX project and you wanna throw it into a traditional mid tower, which only has seven PCI slots at the rear, this is for you. It's not gonna break the bank. You can get this in white or black. It's got great fan support up front. You can mount so much up top, up front, even at the rear here. Um, they, they really didn't restrict you at all when it came to hardware support. And, and I really like that because some cases that try to include all this hardware support end up looking pretty ugly, frankly. And uh, well, with the exception of the front panel design, which you might like or might not, everything about, else about this case is very modern and, and just very straightforward. It'd be difficult to not like what you see on the inside. And again, you can find the Antec DP505 linked at the top of this video's description if you want to check it out. I'll also maybe put the 503 in there too, or a link to at least the 503 video if you want something a bit different. And that's also a black version. So to give you just something else to compare it to, although this is the only one that we've done recently that uh, has a custom loop in it. So let me know what you think about this. I'll try to include all the parts for this build down in the video description. Check that out. Uh, yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this, what you do differently. Do you like the color scheme, the pinch of pink that we threw in there? Uh, give the video a like or a dislike. Consider your, consider subscribing. Yeah, am I, am I missing anything? Join our public Discord server. Um, yeah, all that stuff's down there. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this far into this one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.